My name is Kamal. I receive it. I want to first of all say, Jamba. It has been such a blessing to be here in Kenya. The story has not been told correctly in the, the United States of America. We have come, we have seen, and we will tell the truth. They show erroneous things, wrong pictures. They make you look as though you're not prospering. But the devil is a liar. I believe, like I told the first service, that the Lord is going to send me back and I'm going to do a movie, a documentary on you guys. And I'm going to tell the truth. Amen. Now, as I was sitting there, God gave me a prophetic word for you. And I don't know who the gentleman was, that um, the pastor that was praying earlier, you. But you really confirmed some things that God was saying to me. He said, because my house is to be called a house of prayer, the USA has not been praying, the church of the of United States have not been making it a house of prayer. He said, but because you have, he said, the last shall be first. I come with a prophetic word to tell you that God says that the shift is about to happen and because the wealth transfer is about to come to, come to fruition, he gave me such a download. I'm trying to do this quick because I don't want to take up his time, but I got to tell you this. God said that he has made your land rich agriculturally. Amen. He said, as the rest of the world is believing there's a famine, he said there was wealth in Goshen. Because you've been praying for your Democrats and, and the president, and because your president stood against the United States of America and denied same-sex crap, God says, I'm going to reward you. He says, so get ready. Continue to prepare yourself, but never change because the shift of wealth is coming. I'm telling you, the shift of wealth is coming. You already rich in the spirit, but God is bringing a balance of both in the natural and in the spiritual realm. So Kenya is on the map. So I came 12,000 miles to tell you, do not lose sight, do not lose hope, but God says the last shall be first. Amen. Come on, let's give God a better shout than that in this atmosphere. Kenya, Nairobi, you are called to manifest the favor of God. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. If you have your Bible, please turn there. If you don't, look on the screen. And as you're preparing, I want to honor your bishop. He is such a powerful yet gentle man of God who loves people. God has shared that with me and his wife as well. Pastor Alice, I honor you and I am your family and I am your family. Amen. And it's so good to be here to see all of you. And this will not be the last time. Amen. Amen. The book of Ephesians chapter one, verse 13 declares and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believe you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Jeremiah chapter one, verse 12. And it reads, Jeremiah is saying this. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly. 
For I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. That my word is fulfilled. You may be seated. Hallelujah. That my word is fulfilled. I want you to turn to someone and tell them that you are marked with greatness. Look at them again and make sure they see you saying this for real. You are marked with greatness. Our enemy, the devil, is terrified of the people of God who are sanctified. He will try to set traps. He will try to bring obstacles. He will try to bring you put in or place you in bondages because he is terrified for you really discovering that you have been marked for greatness. He will use people to use names and words to bring false identity to you. He will bring environments to try to mold you to become what it is. But in seasons and in time, God will break the bondages of lies that have been spoken over your life because you have been predestinated before the earth was formed to be called a child of God. It is not what you have done that has conformed or defined you. It is what Jesus has predestined you by name. He said that you have not chosen him, but he has chosen you and ordained you that you would be, bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Someone say, my fruit is called to remain. So do not waste your time of being terrified of him because he is terrified of you because he knows that you have been marked with greatness. That's why if you have ever been in any place that could be considered bad or harm's way or somewhere where you should not have been the mark will protect you to keep you and sustain you because you have been validated you have been authenticated you have been destined to go to the purpose that God has called you to go regardless to where you start God says you're going to finish because he always starts at the end before you begin hallelujah it gives us the type of reassurance that wherever we are right now it's not going to keep us from going where he called us hallelujah glory to God so if you ever have a place of being in uncertainty today I serve notice on your uncertainty that faith says you will get to your promised land. I'm going to tell you how to deal with uncertainty today. There are things that you must learn of how to deal with uncertainty. Hallelujah. Number one. How to deal with uncertainty, unexpected. God knows the best place for me is in his moment. God knows the best place for me in his moment. Number one, how to deal with unexpectedty. Number two, God will prove his strength to get me through a situation. God will prove and will provide his strength to get me through this situation. Number two, God will hear me when I pray to him. Number four, God has worked wonders in the past and he will 
do it again. Someone say, he will do it again. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Whatever you have read in the Old Testament and has been established in the New Testament is still established now. You are still able to see his plans still manifesting in the earthly realm. Number five, God has a plan for everything that happens in our lives. It is not his plan for us to be destroyed. It is not his plan for us to be defeated. It is not his plan for the demonic forces to have the last say over your life. It is his plan to let everything that thought they had you, to let them know there is nothing that can stop you. Hallelujah. So there are five things how to deal with the unexpected. Are you hearing me today? When you are marked, I have a few things I need you to take notes. When you are marked, please hear me today. When you are marked, there are manifestations of showing the sealed as a mark. And it has great meaning. That meaning is you have a guarantee. Someone say a guarantee. Say it again. I have a guarantee. Number two, it indicates ownership. It indicates ownership. That means that what God has marked, he owns. Whenever you have seen in the past a king that rules a kingdom, when he wants a package to go to the next destination, he places his signet ring and marks the package to make sure that everyone knows you cannot tamper with this package because if you tamper with this package, you have to tamper with, you have to deal with the king. So you have been marked indicating ownership by a king, the king of kings, the lord of lords. Number three, it's to show approval that you have not chosen him, but he's chosen you first. And he knows when you come to yourself that you would yes, say yes to him. He knows that you will come to a place of realizing that if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, you would have been swallowed up. And then number four, it is for protection. Every time you are encountering demonic forces. They see the royal diadem in you. You may not feel it, but it's there. It's in you. You have been validated. When Jesus came and you received him, you were changed from one citizenship to a kingdom citizenship. And when you are a king child, you must learn how to speak like the king because you're royal. Anytime you step into a royal family, you must learn the royal traditions, how to talk, how to walk, how to be confirmed that wherever you are, there is protection because when you're royal, you're not by yourself. You are protected. And royal people talk with royal tongues. They do not complain. They do not worry because they know that their father has everything that they need and he will meet their needs. Someone say out loud, I am royal. And no one can stop that. Say it again, I am royal. And no one can stop that. I am convinced that nothing will stop what God has sealed in me. Amen. Sealed means that you're guaranteed to get to your destination.
Whatever God marks, he keeps. Hallelujah. Whatever God blesses, no, no, no thing can curse. Amen. Whatever God purpose, nothing can reverse it. So God puts you in a place that what you have been seeing that is not in line with his purpose will have to come down. Someone say it's coming down. Say it again, it's coming down. Hallelujah. And nobody in this place that's living on this earth today, please hear me, will not leave this earth until you are fulfilling your purpose. Nothing can stop you. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. And he has never been defeated. He is the undisputed champion of the world. And he lives inside of you. Amen. Which means you cannot be defeated too. God would never dwell in losers. Because if you lose, he lose. So that means you have to win in your journey. Hallelujah. Someone say, I have to win in my journey. Glory to God. And it's time that you understand that. Hallelujah. There are nine things the Holy Spirit does for you since he is in you. I want you to write these things down. Amen. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives you power. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you and you will be witnesses. Hallelujah. You will be witnesses unto me. Hallelujah. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So when you have the Holy Spirit, you have been given power. Someone say, I got the power. Oh, come on, say it again. I got the power. Yes, you do. And the enemy does not want you to know how much power you're carrying. You have great power when you have the Holy Spirit. Number two, the Holy Spirit is how God gives his love to you. He shows you how much he validates and appreciates you. God loves us so much that he was willing to give a piece of himself to us that we could not lose in our journey. That's how valuable you are to God. It doesn't matter how people think about you as much as it matters how God thinks about you. Number three, the Holy Spirit helps us. He helps us pray. In other words, when you are dealing with conflict and there is problems that you're dealing with and you begin to pray to God, God hears your prayers, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for you because the Holy Spirit knows that all things will work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So there is nothing that you will not fulfill that God has intentionally made you to do for his glory. Do you believe that today? Some of you can admit that there are places that you were in that you did not know how you were going to get out. But God snatched you out of that place and delivered you and protected you when you were in harm's way. People try to write you off, but nothing can be written off when God has called you blessed. Hallelujah. Number four. Number four. The Holy Spirit reminds us what Christ said. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. Hallelujah. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said. The only way he can bring it to remembrance is if you are reading the word of God. It's good that you listen to the teachers that are in this atmosphere, but you have a Bible for yourself. And God has given you an opportunity to go behind the veil and have an encounter with God yourself. So the more you know, the more you can hear. Amen. God has a plan, ladies and gentlemen, and nothing will stop his plan. His sovereignty has no ambiguity. Ambiguity means uncertainty. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly where you're going and he knows exactly how you're going to get there. He will use people to get you there. He will use your enemy to get you there. Amen. There was a story years ago that I was taught by my, one of my mentors about a king who would choose his daughter's husband in marriage when she got a certain age. When she got a certain age, he would call all the men from all over the royal area and they would come. And they would come in the back of the palace. And after they would come, he would have them line up. And after they line up, he would say to them, the first person that would get to the other side of his long pool can have the hand of his marriage. Before they agreed, they had, there was a canvas covering the pool. They had to agree before the canvas was removed. They agreed. Then the canvas was removed from the pool. When the pool was seen by the men, they saw sharks in the pool. And the king said the first person that would go across the pool would get the hand of his daughter. Well, you know what happened. The king said, get ready, go. Nobody jumped. Nobody went in the pool. But they heard a splash. And they saw a young man swimming to the other side with all his life. And he got to the other side without the sharks touching him. The king was so excited. He went to the young man and he said, son, what is your name? The young man replied and said, forget about my name. I want to know the name of the person that pushed me in the pool. <laughs> the enemy will push you into your destiny. God will use people to push you when you don't want to go. And no sharks and nothing can stop what God has intentionally called you to go to. Hallelujah. So you are being pushed in this season because you are marked with greatness. Hallelujah. Number five. The Holy Spirit helps us to obey God's word. When we are out of order, God's Holy Spirit will convict us to get back in alignment. You cannot rest when you are out of alignment. You can try to act like you do not hear him, but he will not stop talking to you until you say, okay, I will do it your way, Lord. It's like a constant talk in your ear. So the Holy Spirit will continue to help us to obey when we're out of order. See, God will not throw you away like people do. He keeps you even when you're in the wrong way. The Bible says whom he loves, he chastens. He does not throw you away. Hallelujah. Number six, please hear me today. Number six, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. He sets us apart. There are seasons and times of our lives that God will interrupt relationships and he will purposely cut them off because he knows that you are not strong enough to cut them off. He knows that if you are attached to certain things that are considered dead, it will not let you produce the fruit that you're called to produce in that season. So he will cut it off. 
Someone say, cut it off, Lord. I know sometimes it may hurt, but it's necessary. God has cut me a lot. But without the cutting, there would not have been fruit in my life. Hallelujah. Number seven, the Holy Spirit changes us into the character of Christ. He wants us to be in the image of Christ spiritually. The Bible says in, he, in, in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 29, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinated them to be conformed to the image of his son, that they might be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, it is his desire and his will even though you're going through this transition and you're taking steps. Someone say steps. See, the steps that you are making is validated by God. Even the steps that you are making in your own will, God knew that you would make that step. So he allowed that step to be in his will. And he will use the same thing you did for his good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will make sure that whatever you have been doing, it will work together for good. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Number seven. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit changes us into the character of Christ. Number eight. The Holy Spirit fills you with hope until you overflow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have learned over the years of my life that every time I have had encounters that the enemy thought he was going to destroy or demise who I was, God would step in the way and he would make sure that I would see his Elohistic ability to come and interrupt the things that the devil was trying to keep me stuck in. And it gave me more hope in God. So there are things that God has delivered you from and things that God has taken you from and covered you from protecting you in harm's way that gives you more hope in him hallelujah who has more hope in God let me ask again who has more hope in God because you know that God was for you you know that God sanctified and purposed you you know that it was God who kept you and sustained you that you would go to the fullness of your potential hallelujah number eight the Holy Spirit fills you with hope until it overflows and then number nine the Holy Spirit gives you spiritual gifts someone say I have spiritual gifts Yes, you have spiritual gifts. Many in here have more gifts than others. That's considered talents. As Jesus would tell his, his disciples the parable of the, the five talents and the two talents and the one. Many of you have many talents. But this Holy Spirit gives you spiritual gifts. I had a young man a few days ago ask me, Pastor, how do I determine what gift I should use first? I told him it, that was not your decision to make. It was for God to make that decision because the Bible says your gifts will make room for you. In other words, the door will open for you, your gift, and you must walk through the door. Even if you think you're called to do something and you have not been called to do it yet, God will take you through steps to strengthen you, to prepare you for destiny. Someone said, I am going to destiny. See, increase does not come by time. It comes by truth. And truth is the highest realm of, re of reality. Because God is the essence of truth. And truth is the essence of God. Whenever God speaks, it must come to pass. God cannot lie. And God has spoken you as his word. And his word, you will not return void. Someone say, I will not be void. Because I am his word. Hallelujah. So you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that I have come from Phoenix, Arizona to confirm what your bishop has been speaking. 
I did not know that he spoke in the beginning year that the heavens were open. I came in here and stepped into this arena and the spirit of the Lord told me that the heavens were open for Nairobi and Deliverance Church. When he said it, when he told me, when I spoke it, he thought I read a program, but I did not. I felt it in my spirit that the heavens are open for the churches of Nairobi and something extraordinary is going to happen for you. You are very, very special in God's eyes. You have not been forgotten. You are not going to lose in your journey. Are you hearing me today? That's why you can have the joy of the Lord, which should be your strength. Because nothing will stop God's word from accomplishing what he has prepared it to do. And you are his word. Someone say, I am his word. I want to show you an illustration quickly, an illustration. Hallelujah. I need three. Yes, come quickly. Watch this. This is very important. You are the package. You have been stamped. You have been given a destination. This is you. God has marked you. This is you. You have been marked before the foundations of the earth were formed. Anything God marks, he what? He keeps. What he blesses, you cannot curse. So you have been marked by God. And it has been marked with purpose and it is marked with destiny. So destiny's name is on you. Hallelujah. Yet there are times that when you are marked that some things might grab you that should not grab you. You can be in the wrong hands. That's the wrong hands. And then it can go from one hand and thrown to another hand. And go from another, another hand. And it's constantly you're thrown from one place to another place. Where you begin to think that you have no meaning nor no purpose. Because you're tossed to and fro. You are put here and put there. Sometimes they even drop you. But whatever they, whatever, whenever you're dropped. It does not remove the mark that God has put on your life. And there are certain times and seasons that truth steps into your life. And it's called the Holy Ghost that he will interrupt your tossing to and from, your false identities. And he comes and grabs you and picks you up. Picks you up. This is the Holy Spirit. You stay there. Now the Holy Spirit will take you to destiny. Hallelujah. Because destiny has her name on you. And you have to go that the place that destiny's called you. That is destiny. You have been tossed to and from. Some people have misidentified who you are because you were in other places that you should not have been. But the Holy Spirit says he's coming now and he's interrupting the tossing to and from and he's taking you to destiny hallelujah I'm telling you this is your season that you're going to see great exploits and great things happen in your life I've come to from Phoenix Arizona to tell you whoo globe I say hey Nairobi blessings and gifts and favor is coming in your life 2019 it's your year the rest of your story will be the best of your story glory to God someone say the rest of my story will be the best of my story now tell somebody and look at them right in their eyes and say did you hear what I said the rest of my story will be the best of my story Woo! glory hallelujah Kenya Nairobi God is upon you and you are about to hatch you're coming out of shells. You're coming out of false identities. God says, I have purpose 
this moment that you would understand that nothing can stop what I've declared you to be and to go. Destiny has you. She's awaiting you in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that today? Hey! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is your year. Please hear me. I'm not trying to, to be so excited, but I can't help it. I feel that God is going to do something for you, and I'm so happy for you. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so happy for you because God says that your days have been numbered, that you are going to see his hand now come into your life to sweep out all the mess that's been around it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you believe that? I want you to stand on your feet. Your bishop has made a declaration that the heavens are open, and they are. But I declare and decree today that as you are in this place, hallelujah, as the days that Elijah called down fire from heaven, there's a fire that's about to come into this atmosphere that's going to clean and sweep everything that has tried to attach itself to your purpose. It is coming off of you today. You are not going to allow anything or anybody to redefine who you are. You are the chosen of God. And since the heavens are open for you, since the heavens are favorable for you, fire is coming in your midst to devour every problem that you have had in your past. In the name of Jesus, God says, I'm going to give you so much favor that when you go back to your homes, they will know something's different about you because your language is changing. Your smile is changing. Your joy is back. Your peace is secure. Hallelujah. Somebody say, give me back my joy. No devil will keep your joy. No problems will keep your joy. You will no longer be a victim of somebody else's problem. You will move in joy. Unspeakable joy. Come on, raise up your hands. The Holy Spirit is in this house today. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, I have spoken what you have me say. Now, Lord, only you can do the rest in this place. I declare that your fire from heaven is coming in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is sweeping every area in your children's life. It is removing the bad places, the strongholds, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let fire come, God. Let fire come, God. Let fire come, God. Fire! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you that this place is filled with your glory. And I declare that everybody that's in this arena right now will never be the same. They will walk with confidence. They will walk knowing that destiny is calling them. In the name of Jesus, I declare that they will speak those things that be not as though they already are. In the name of Jesus, God. And I declare that the rest of their story will be the best of their story. Fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that your people will see that this 
this has been ordained this is a Kairos moment that they'll never forget in Jesus name amen come on give the Lord the best praise you can give him in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name I mean the best praise I want to I want to shout in this place the walls of Jericho is falling down your walls everything that stopped you is coming down in the name of Jesus head of our cross Satan hallelujah 